It's me, Christy, again, just a few more minutes and we're gonna get started. So uh, we have a lot of new people jumping on. So if you are getting settled and could take a minute to introduce yourself, that would be lovely. No worry, you don't have to. You can stay incognito the entire time, um, but it's helpful to know where you are geographically and what your role is so that people can network and connect with others that are either close to them or on a similar path and mission with them. So feel free to just drop a quick note in the chat. Others have already introduced themselves. And for sure, if you have a question, something you wanna make sure we cover today, this is being recorded, including the written text. And so if we don't get to something today, we will make sure that we get to it um, in the coming days. So it's really important that even if it's a technical question or it's a, where do I go for or who can I connect with, anything is fine. If we can't find the answer, I am certain that somebody in and around this great globe of ours can help us find the answer. So feel free to just drop in the chat. We'll get started in about three minutes. All right, my friends, it's that time. So let's see, I'm gonna get my video. I, I can't figure out where to be. Okay, so um, beautiful to see you all. I'm Christy, if we haven't met before. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, just if you're new to Zoom and if I'm really big, the first thing I love to tell people is put it on gallery view because you do not need to see me that close up. So in your top right hand corner, there is a speaker view and a gallery view. And it's just beautiful if you do gallery view and you can see everyone. Um, we've only got a few brave souls that are doing their video today, which is totally fine. Roberta, good to meet you. Hattie, so beautiful to see you. Um, Hattie doesn't know this, but she's our surprise guest expert today. So we're gonna call upon her a ton. Um, but yeah, I just told her that. Um, 
And we've got lots and lots to cover. You are totally welcome to stay incognito um, and or to mute yourself and unmute yourself. You are welcome to uh, turn your video on or take it off. Like, see, this is why we do the hat, Emily. That's all you gotta do. Um, and just two other quick logistical things. Um, Tony, Ann, and Ashley are part of my team and they are going to be watching the chat very closely. I won't be. Um, it's a little bit too much with this number of people for me to look at the chat and to look at you and to make sure we kind of stay on track to get some things covered in the hour. Um, but they will interrupt me if there's something that needs our group attention. Otherwise, just know this is being recorded. And um, if your questions don't get answered during the live session, we will work tire tirelessly until we find an answer for you. So at any point, drop your questions, big, small, or otherwise in the chat. It'll get recorded and we'll do our best to answer it. You can also unmute yourself. I've just muted you all um, as you came in because we're all working from um, a home or a place that may not be a quiet space, myself included. So just feel free though to unmute yourself um, and say something. If you wanna introduce yourself that way and not typing, that's okay. It's also fine to be typing while I'm talking. So it's all good if you're new to doing this. Some of us have been doing more Zoom meetings in the last week than we've ever in our life. And so if you need to move around, turn your video off and just like walk around the room. It's totally fine. Or leave your video on and we'll watch you walk around. Okay. So, um, I'm going to share my screen again. If you're new to zoom, uh, when I share my screen, it all changes and you'll see mostly my screen. Uh, you may still see me. You may still see some of the people talking. When I stop sharing my screen, I might be big again. So you might have to do gallery view again. Um, but keep chatting, keep asking questions, um, big, small, functional. Uh, I did see the one about the um, practicum assignments and more applied assignments. And so, uh, Hattie, you might look in the stream and see if you see that question um, about when students need to do a more applied assignment or assignment that is really now seems very challenging to do at a distance. That one's probably a really big topic that we can do a little bit more support around because many of my colleagues who um, have been teaching in this D uh, distance format for a long time, have lots of ideas, but if we have one or two tips today, I want to be ready to share that as well, okay? So just know that if we don't get to you, we have a very eclectic group, so um, I want to kind of hit on lots of things that might be um, most usable for everybody to kind of get started. And then what was beautiful about last night when we did this, our guest expert, Sarah Nichols, really said to us, well, what's going to happen afterwards? What's going to happen after we've, you know, met each other and gotten some of this foundational work? How do we keep it going? So just know that we're committed to keeping the conversation going. Everybody who registered, We'll get the recording of the session, actually all three sessions. You'll get the PowerPoint. Ashley's gonna drop things in the chat, including uh, a quick link to today's PowerPoint because I already changed it from last night based upon things. Uh, and then you'll get in an email flow where we call it, you'll get dripped content. So there'll be content that will come to you over time, but you will just always know that you can reach out on social media or email and ask anything you need and we will find a way to get you an answer all right so even though if you don't know me you'll know quickly i talk a lot and i talk fast so it is not interrupting me to chat with a question and then ashley or tony will be brave and unmute themselves and ask it or you can unmute yourself and just say christy wait 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 I missed that. I didn't hear it. I just got on. What are we doing? All good. All right. So it's meant to be much more interactive and informal. We just have 60, we have about 150 registered. So it can feel big and you may not know other people. I know many of you. Um, so it's easy for me to say, just turn on your camera and talk to me, but please do as you're ready. Okay. So today, um, I always begin my face-to-face -face sessions and my online sessions. You'll find very quickly that what's good for one setting is good for the other. Um, 
with a moment to ground us. And that's just to sort of like close off whatever's around, make sure that you're in a place where you can take some notes, that you are kind of clear on what your goals are for participating. Why did you sign up for this? And then I always look for a little inspiration. And so Grace Lee Boggs is one of those places I go. She's a Michigander for any of my Michigan friends that are on. Um, and so I'm just gonna read it to you just in case you're on the phone and you can't see my screen or you're uh, moving around and trying to get some movement for your eighth Zoom call of the day. So, um, Grace invites us to say that every crisis, actual or impending, needs to be viewed as an opportunity to bring about profound changes in our society. Going beyond protest organizing, visionary organizing begins by creating images and stories of the future that help us imagine and create alternative alternatives to existing systems. So I'm gonna share with you my wish for today, my wish or my vision, what I'm trying to um, keep in my heart and in my mind is that as we move through this time, that we will see early care and education differently going forward, meaning in the next hour, the next day, certainly the next month and the next year, that we will, shift our values in, especially in the United States, and begin to see the critical role that early care and education plays in our larger system and for our humanity going forward. So if you have a vision for how you want to see um, us on the other side of things, drop it in the chat, unmute yourself. But what image or story will you say going forward? We know that there's a challenge, many, many challenges, but if we wanna create an alternative, what is it that you want to do to be part of that future and part of that vision? So feel free to drop it in the chat or unmute yourself. While people are chatting or feeling brave to unmute, a quick note, again, you can keep your video on or off. You can introduce yourself at any point um, that helps people know if somebody from their state is also on, somebody that's got a similar job but may live 3,000 miles away. Um, so feel free at any point to uh, share your strengths. If you know the answer to something that has been posted, go for it. Don't wait for me to vet it or answer it. You can just go ahead and answer it. Um, just use I statements. This is what has worked for me. This is what I do. This is what I believe. That's perfect. Another quick thing, um, anything that we share in the chat, a link, a comment, a suggestion, a tip, a resource, all of that will be shared with you. So don't feel like you have to madly capture it or hyperlink to it. We'll get everything to you. Um, and it's, you know, if you need something faster than we do, you can just email me at any time. We'll get it to you right away. Oh, uh, I think I already said that. One thing is a quick caution. This can be overwhelming. There's a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of people that know a lot of stuff. And it can make you feel old. This is my, <laughs> this is how I think. Um, especially when it comes to technology, things change almost as rapidly as what's happening right now with the virus. And if you feel like you have to keep up, you will constantly feel like you're not enough. So my invitation to you is to pick what works for you and just do that. Don't worry if everybody else is doing Zoom and you like Google Hangout, do that. Like, don't feel like you have to keep up with everybody else. It's all gonna change and it's gonna continue to change. So just try to, do things with a little grace and ease. You're also gonna notice that my pop-ups might show up on your screen. That's, that's either my mom checking in to see how I am or somebody needing the Zoom link and Tony's taking care of all of that. Maybe not my mom, but everything else. Okay, um, what else can I tell you? Um, I have three mantras. Uh, and this is sort of what grounds us. This is what I used to design um, this session together. So I want 
us always to think about what before how. We're gonna give you tons of how. How do I help students get a practical experience online? How do I create community online? How do I assess online? How do I deliver PD to people that are in rural areas or where bandwidth is an issue? How do I um, make sure that people feel engaged? How do I, whoa, right? It's a lot of stuff. So you always wanna make sure that we're clear about what before how and even before that sorry we want to think about our mindset are we and our stakeholders in a place to receive so one of the things that right now that our challenge is is we're all fixers and doers we're all you got a problem i'll give you 20 because if you guys are like me if one link is good 20 links is even better and so how do we balance between a being of service and supporting and getting people what they need? Balance that with, oh, am I overwhelming them? So we wanna make sure that they're in a place where they can learn, where they can access, and we'll talk a lot about that um, going forward. And then we really wanna make sure that we are focusing on emotional intelligence. So EQ is what emotional intelligence stands for. Thank you, Ashley. Um, some people call it EI, but for those of us that work in early intervention, um, it gets confusing. So I often call it EQ. So this is the framework that we're working out of today is that our mindset, our mindset, our beliefs, our values has to be there and in place before any instruction will work. Always what before how, and then we need to be thinking about our EQ. Um, very quickly, if we haven't met before, let me just tell you a little bit about my background so you understand like why I'm offering the Zoom sessions. And um, for those of you who do know me, um, these are some funny pictures from back in the day. So this is um, my work with young children in Idaho and in Oregon uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s. And my work has always been young children, less than five, and children with diverse abilities. So children on IEPs or IFSPs is where I hang out all the time. Um, my doctorate is in early intervention, uh, but my work has been almost all preschool, really heavy preschool, partially because it's my passion and partially because when I came to Ohio, I was faculty at Kent State University and our program um, was birth to eight, but it was pretty heavy preschool then too. So I hang out a lot in early intervention, infants and toddlers, but mostly preschoolers and early elementary these days. So that's my content knowledge. But since I was 12, I've been working with adults and I've always been teaching the adult side of um, our work with children. And so I grew up in Idaho and I was teaching swimming lessons uh, by the age of 12 and teaching people to become lifeguards. So I would always teach the mom and me class or the adults that were learning how to uh, swim or who wanted to be, become a lifeguard. So I've always, always, always been thinking about children and their health and well being, but really doing that through the adult that is mediating it. And then I live in Ohio currently. I do hang out in the great state of Iowa a lot, so I like to tell people I'm from Idaho, Ohio. It's just a, a funny way to say that I uh, live in states with lots of vowels and hang out in lots of different places. So for, for those of you who don't know me, in 2013, I left the university and uh, started to work on what we call the early care and education revolution. And the revolution stems from, again, Grace Lee Boggs, where the emphasis is on evolution. And it's just no greater example than what we're doing right now um, that we need to evolve. If I make weird eye contact, I also have a new puppy. And so I have a whole bunch of treats that I'm giving him to try to be good, um, but he may need something. So I just check on him every once in a while. So if I look like I have a nervous twitch, it's just me looking to see where my dog is. All right, so let's get started. Um, today we're gonna do four things. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview. And then if you wanna drop in the chat, which of the four topics you're most interested in or where your questions land, that's another way to stay engaged is just use the chat. So the first thing is really diving into what are your skills? 
where when you're picking and thinking about teaching in a distance education format you really need to think about what are your strengths what can you leverage about what you already know about children and apply that to adults so are you trying to are you looking for more ways to figure out your strengths and your interests and your preferences and your way of learning the second option is to really think about what before how are you really clear about what you want to accomplish you're like i want to provide pd in the great state of michigan to all our four-year-old teachers okay that's a big question um just saying you want to do that isn't deep enough do you want to give them in output or do you want input do you want both output and input and how do you jump in anytime and say yeah these are things that i've thought of for years as i've been designing courses online and as any of you have know that have taught online it takes a lot of planning you got to really think about are they going to interact with me with each other with the content so are you really interested in what are my goals what's my what that's number two number three yeah, I'll jump in yeah please i'll just say in that input output um in in lots of years of teaching courses online that being really cautious um allowing yourself to think that you won't necessarily accomplish the same full amount that you might in your face-to-face -face and being okay with that and really targeting what are those specific outcomes or goals because it does take a whole different level of time and so sometimes I think in my face-to-face -face class I can do everything the same and you can it's just in a different way and and giving yourself that that okay with time and not feeling that you have to meet all of those pieces and that's so helpful because maybe hattie what it does is it helps us slow down when we're face to face too like if any of you saw an earlier version of what i was going to cover today i swear i don't know what i was thinking about it, everything in the kitchen sink and then last night i was like holy crap i did one twelfth of it so it taught me that i need to slow down and notice where you all are not just what i wanted to cover and then be really strategic about what's most important versus getting through as much as possible. That's kind of what I was hearing when you said that, Hattie. All right, you guys know the drill, you know to ask questions, so that's number two. Number three is who are you serving? I think this is probably as any of us who've taught or done professional development for years, we've kind of gotten lazy about this. Oh, they're you know pre-K providers, they're childcare providers, they're pre-service teachers, they're student teachers. We haven't like maybe gone back to our roots about really knowing who they are. So I'm gonna give you ideas about how to be thoughtful about your learner, about universal design for learning, and definitely about equity. We have to be very, very careful, um, especially those of us who, um, not only have privilege, but white privilege, that the white dominant culture is going to further marginalize or create stress or create inequity for many of our consumers and our um, partners and our shared um, colleagues and students. And so that's a big, big topic. Um, and those of us who are white or who pass for white definitely need to do more work around um, this topic because we may be creating inequity more than likely we are creating inequity because we're working from a lens of white privilege so I want to just touch on that a little bit of tonight at least the broad topic of equity you could even think about this in terms of access to um, an internet service that has high speed so it doesn't have to go um, beyond just that we're putting things online it could be vision it could be hearing it could be how people process information as well as internet and then you layer that with the intersect of ses race gender spirituality all of these big big things that we have to really be thoughtful and talking about okay uh, that's number three and then number four is what are your long-term goals so right now you're like, I gotta have it online tomorrow or I had to have it online on Monday, last Monday. Um, 
but I want you to take a pause and go, what is it you're kind of moving towards? Where are you going long term? Not just where are you today, but where do you want to be? So it's really this notion of uh, a bigger perspective, even though none of us have a crystal ball. We never did have a crystal ball. We're just now noticing that we didn't have control over 99.9% .9 of our thoughts, our actions, or what was happening in the world. We were just believing that we did, especially those, again, of us that have white privilege. So this is an opportunity to say, wow, what can I become so much more aware of now that I was unaware of before? and can be more aware of going forward, all right? So those are your four options in reverse order. Feel free to drop it in the chat. Ashley will kind of do a quick count and then let me know if anybody has preferences. But the fourth one is, what are your long-term? Where are you going long-term? What do you need long-term? Well, how can we support you long-term? Um, what was the second one, sorry. <laughs> I've got myself all backwards here, guys. Okay, so, um, Bear with me. I won't give anybody a seizure. Long term is number four. Um, who are you serving is number three. What is your, gosh, sorry. I keep putting my cursor somewhere. Number two is what are your goals right now? And then number one was what are your skills? Okay. I'm watching your chats. That's great. And again, feel free to unmute yourself, mute yourself again if you need to. Okay. I'm going to get us started a little bit, knowing that you're going to jump in. Um, and Ashley, you're going to interrupt me if uh, there's something that I need to prioritize because time will go fast. But the good news is all of this will be recorded, all of the content, even what I don't cover in one way or another, we will get in your hands. Okay, so I also um, have notes, so I want to make sure I cover key things. So quickly, because I don't see a lot of people saying, yeah, I really want to know a lot about my skills, um, but a few of you did. Quick few things, these are my tips. How much support are you going to need? If you are new to technology, then own up to that. And as Hattie said, just give yourself a little bit of grace. Do not try to be like somebody who's been doing it forever. My best suggestion is find somebody in your space. So like Laura and others who might be doing teletherapy, uh, Laura Fish, Barb Avila, a couple of people in my life wear a couple of hats. They do professional development and they also do um, therapy and coaching of parents and or people. You might need to go and look to see what is telehealth or um, different um, therapies talking about the best way to be HIPAA and FERPA compliant. You may not want Christie's ideas because I just want free stuff that I can easily do. So you want to kind of get in the niche of where you are before you think about who's your go-to. I would also say um, think about going to one or two sources. Try not to look at everything that's posted on the internet or that comes across your social media. Decide who's your kind of professional home. The Division for Early Childhood has a whole arm for professional development. Uh, Beth Diedrich, who's on today, can give you a little link to her work and on Facebook, and she can connect you with what DEC is doing. If NAEYC is your professional home, the National Association for the Education of Young Children, if ASHA, if zero to three, kind of pick that and say, how can I go to them for support? So you're not just running out of everything. Think also about how do you learn? So for me, I don't read directions. I like somebody to show it to me and I need it to be fast. So I love to look on YouTube for something that's less than three minutes that shows me how to do it. If it's going to be a long, like five bullets, I probably won't follow it. But if you can show me with three bullets and maybe a quick video, I'm all in. But that may not be your style. So think about is there stuff out there? If I'm going to use Zoom or I'm going to use Google Hangout or I'm going to use a discussion board or I'm going to do podcasting, is there stuff already out there? Don't rely just on the person like the company, but look broadly and say, 
Is there something in my mode? Because your company that you buy your service through might only do blogs and you're like, I really need to see a video or they might do it at a high level for business. And you're like, I need to see this for like a teacher level. So really think about how you learn. And then my rule always is if somebody you know is using that technology, just do it. Because somebody you know is already using that technology. You can just write out to them, write to them and say, hey, can you show me how to do this? So my friend Marsha at the Colorado Department of Ed, she loves Google Sites. I don't know that I really do, but I'll do them as long as she does them with me. Because if I get stuck, I can say, Marsha, can you help me with this? Uh, last night, our guest was um, Sarah Nichols, and she uses wikis. 90% of the people that are in the community of practice for early intervention don't really like wikis, but we all do them because Sarah will manage it for us. So you really want to think about how much support do I need? How do I learn? And do I know somebody? So does anybody want to jump in? Because that's all I'm going to say about number one. Hattie, as my resident uh, expert, anything you would add or anybody that is in this space, unmute, jump in. You don't have to either, because I didn't tell you that you were going to be my co-presenter. Okay. And again, this will all be recorded. I also did a pod, uh, um, a, a blog, Ashley will put the link here in the chat, um, where uh, a colleague had asked, why Zoom versus a Facebook closed group? Like, why would I do a Zoom gathering or a Zoom meeting over a Facebook closed group? And so I went through these four things with that specific example in a blog the other day. And so if you want to hear it a little bit differently with a real example, um, that's another thing you can return to to hear it again. All right. So what are your goals? This is the big one. Um, I've got tons of resources for this one. I'm going to not talk a ton about it because I have so many resources that I can give you that are um, self-guided, self-paced, self-explanatory, but I will pair and share it pair and share. I just read it, Melissa. Sorry. I was like pair and share. Um, I will show and share so you know what you might want and then you can go to it um, on your action plan. Okay, good. So um, this is, I'm going to use this example that Melissa just put in the chat. Their struggle is to do pair and share or breakout groups when they're doing um, distance education formats uh, during online. So they feel really good. Uh, Melissa, I'm making this up. You feel really good when you're face to face and people can turn to their elbow partner or you can break into small groups because you're physically there. But how do you do breakout rooms or how do you um, do pair and shares, maybe even on the fly? Um, and so I'm going to... Um, show you how you make that decision, and then I'll try to give you a couple of examples as well, okay? So we're gonna talk about what before how, output versus input, and this notion of interacting, and we're gonna use the pair and share as an example. If you've not heard that word pair and share, that's like you pair up two people and they share something. So how do I create that after in a, in a virtual space, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of things, and Ashley's gonna put all of these in um, the links in the chat so you can um, multitask and navigate on your old screen. You can make my Zoom either minimize it or make it not full screen, or you can just watch along with me, okay? So you start with what's your what? And so we have, we I follow and have for my uh, all of my teaching of adult career, um, L.D. Fink's work around significant learning outcomes. So the way I think of this is a trivial pursuit game. So Emily and Anne and others that have done a deep dive with me, you know this, so feel free to jump in. And if you have created a significant learning outcome that you have your at your fingertips and want to show with people, share with people, that would be fabulous. Um, so a Trivial Pursuit game, if you've played Trivial Pursuit, maybe you actually did in the last week because you've been at home, um, you can't win at Trivial Pursuit by being good in only one area. So if you're great at history or you're great at science or you're great in like whatever's kind of like um, pop whatever, you can't win because in Trivial Pursuit, you have to have one piece of the pie that's green, orange, brown, yellow, 
purple, blue, I don't know the colors. So think of this circle as a trivial pursuit game piece. And when you're designing your whatever it is, you want to have your outcomes. So let's take that question that Melissa shared. And before she goes, what technology would help me do a pair and share? She needs to articulate what is the outcome? What is behind wanting a pair and share? Does she want people to share information with each other? Does she want them to um, engage in some sort of critical thinking? Does she want to connect people that are in Java likes or have the same struggle? Does she want a human dimension where they can actually learn about themselves and learn more about others? So let's go back to that notion of white privilege and white dominant culture. If you want people to share, what has that been like for you? What are you unaware of? Then you go, oh, that's my learning objective. Is it caring? I want people to understand, um, more about people that come from a different SES or religion or race or language so that I can better uh, have more empathy for them? Or is it about learning how to learn? So the idea is that no matter what you're going to do, how long it's going to be or what format it's going to be in, you always start with what's your what. And so what Ashley has dropped in the chat is this handout, which I'm going to navigate to. Um, Ashley, did you put the one with the examples in there? Did the, I miss the one? I'm about to put that in now. Okay, thanks. I'm clicking on the others. Okay, so this is um, what we did. Uh, my other, um, my other uh, go-to is what do I know about working with children that I can leverage right now to work in this scary way that I'm having to be expected to teach or to um, help others. And so if I know that um, I am know a lot about assessment, so Patty teaches a class on um, authentic assessment up there in Alaska or has taught a class teaching her students how to engage in authentic assessment. So if she was teaching about authentic assessment, she could come and look at this handout that we're sharing with everybody. And if she, again, looks at the pie and she says, huh, I want a foundational outcome for my students. I want them to learn. I want them to know. I want them to understand this concept of authentic assessment. What we have in this handout is we have examples for each of Fink's six areas, foundational, application, integration, human dimension, caring and learning how to learn. And then we've given you a sentence starter. I used authentic assessment as the example. This is just to give you an example. Um, so Hattie could say, my students will engage in determining a child's eligibility status with empathy and compassion. Now that drives every decision she makes about assignments, about content that she is or is not going to deliver, how she's gonna do a parent share, all of that stems from this outcome of wanting her students to determine eligibility for early intervention or early childhood special ed with greater empathy and greater compassion. So let me pause there for a minute and make sure you feel comfortable of what we've just shared, knowing that we're gonna give you a ton more, that we start off with what before how, but I'm gonna to come to the how next. You wanna target significant learning outcomes. We're giving you the suggestion of Fink's work, and then we're giving you specific sentence starters to help you. So let me pause and let you ask a question. Let anybody who's tried this jump in. Christy, we can share from Early Choices what we did. Thank you, Emily. Uh, so we've been doing a community of practice using Zoom once a month. And the biggest challenge that we've had in supporting our learners is the learning how to learn goal in this format. Okay. Finding how to be comfortable as an adult learner, turning on your microphone and your camera and engaging with other people. Um, being on a webinar that's more, that we're trying to emulate a face-to-face -face experience with folks has been a real challenge. So this is where we're sitting right now, trying to figure out how to support um, our community into this new setting. So Emily, that is so powerful. I, I want you to say more, but I wanna make sure people caught that. So what more than ever right now, 
teams that are delivering content in an online format or what we would say is a distance education format have to really be thoughtful about their goals around how am I making sure that the learner can learn in this distributed or distance format. This has to rise to the top to make sure people have the competence and confidence, not only access, but they feel comfortable. Do they have the right equipment? Do they have the support they need on a back channel so that if it breaks down and I'm teaching and they can't get on, who's going to be there as a lifeline for them? How can we, if, you know, Anne and Emily are teaching, can one take the role of tech support so that one can still deliver the content? So you notice today I have Ashley and Emily, uh, Ashley and Emily, Ashley and Tony. They're helping me with anybody who can't get in, anybody that has questions, so that I can be fully present with you and with the content. Other things you guys want to ask Emily, uh, or do you want her to tell you again where she is and what they're doing? And Anne, you can jump in, or Hattie. I would just briefly add and to build on what you have shared that if you go back to your um, kind of the con the, the yes, <laughs> that your circle. Um, I have found that in, in response to teaching online that the being able to develop those relationships where people can still feel connected just is so critical and I and, and students really appreciate that and then I find the content can come. Um, so having space every time we meet to have a check-in, if it's just a single question, tell me something that went really well this past week, something that was challenging and something you're looking forward to, or whatever that prompt is, just that time and space um, to connect really engages and allows um, those people to be able to connect together, just as a recommendation. You know, Hattie, what you're just doing again and again for me, which is so inspiring, is that this is like how we should be teaching anyway. And it's so easy to be like, classes started or the webinar, you know, the, the conference has started or the keynotes has started. And we don't like go, hey, human, how are you? How was your drive in today? How's your child who's been sick for a while? I saw on Facebook that you had a rough weekend. Like this is an inspiring way to say, maybe we could be more human all along. That excites me. Okay. We're doing okay, guys? Whew, a lot, I know. Okay, now, before I give you a more hows, a couple other just suggestions of grace and ease, I would also invite you to, again, leverage what you know about children and draw that into your work with adults. So if you're thinking about offering professional development for your pre-K teachers in your district or um, school's gonna be out now in the state of Kansas for the rest of the year. Um, what is that gonna mean for our families? What is that gonna mean for our teachers, our paraprofessionals, our therapists? All of these questions. Maybe ground yourself whenever you feel you're like, you're gonna kinda lose it. Uh, the four S's, we talk about this in terms of secure um, attachment science with children, but I'd like you to do the same thing uh, for your adult learners. Are they safe, both physically and emotionally? Do they feel seen? Are you able to soothe them or are you poking the bear? And do you have a secure attachment? Laura, I don't wanna put you on the spot if you're still on and wanna say anything on this particular topic too, like how do we take what we know to be good for interactions and relationships with children and how do we use that and build upon as we interact with adult humans? Hi, Christy. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Love it. Um, yay. So um, I think you're, you're, you're setting us on that path. Just even really us um, taking time because we, um, we can take the space now to really investigate what these four S's mean mm -hmm. and start with our own selves, putting the oxygen mask on ourselves and really looking at what helps me feel seen, soothed, safe, and secure. Um, and, and then even considering, um, building from that, like 
obviously like having every, maybe this is even the check-in, right? So like, hey, everybody, what in this moment, what's going to help you feel seen, soothed, safe, and secure? Because it's moment to moment, isn't it? It's not just a check, I got it, this is my thing. So that's just off the off the top of my yes, head. Thank, what comes you. To thank me. you for letting yeah. me put you on the spot. Um, no problem. Laura, if you all don't know Laura's work, um, Ashley or Tony will drop it in the chat, but she's an amazing um, colleague of mine that I've learned just so much from, and she's been a guest on my podcast, and she continues to help me learn about how we approach each other from a relationship place and making sure that we're in the green zone and that we're safe, seen, soothed, and secure. Um, I, it's funny because I, Laura, I made a script for Mike because I'm like, when I'm hyper or hypo, which I always am, I'm like nothing in between right now. I'm just either up or down. I said, this is what I want you to say. This is what will make me feel safe. So when I say something that's like irrational, I want you just to say, and what could I do just to make you feel a little bit more safe right now? And I know you're reading from my script and it's okay. I want you to read from my script. <laughs> so he's Beautiful. like, okay. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that too, Christine. That's the work I do with couples. Where do we get the crazy idea that our partner was supposed to read our mind? Let's just, <laughs> just let's just put that down and, and give them the script, give them the, the guidelines and just make it all easier for everybody. Good for and you. And maybe that's for our families too. Like, why are we assuming we know what families want and that everybody wants to turn their homes into schools right now? I'm guessing nobody wanted that. Just a guess. All right. Um, this is just a quick resource. Um, it's, it's all to be able to do this with grace and ease, to be able to slow down, to be able to provide, as Laura said, to put your own mask on before helping others. When we're all helpers, fixers, we want to do you really have to have strong emotional intelligence. You have to be able to, I was working with the Colorado Department of Ed yesterday, their early childhood team, and they were just trying to figure out how can they be responsive and not reactive? How can they stay true to their um, commitment to the children and families of Colorado, but also like we got to be able to turn on a dime, whatever they, they might need. No, maybe they need you to just slow down and respond, ask a question, sit and listen deeply versus give another hyperlink to another resource. So even though our knee jerk is to give help solve really what make that, what might make that person feel safe, seen, soothed, and secure is for us to listen, to ask, and to just be present with them, which is super hard for me. Okay. Jump in. If you guys have more good stuff. Um, okay. Now, you're like, but Christy, it's almost the top of the hour and we've gotten like no hows. Okay, so we're going to give you some hows next, but this is what's coming. So I was going to have it ready today, but I decided it would be better just to show it to you today and then have it to you on Saturday. And then you'll be kind of like process all through this and ready. So how do you pick the right technology to do the pair and share? So let's say you've got your human goals and you're going to check in with people and you want to thank you um you want to you know um achieve these human dimensions and these learning to learn learning how to learn goals okay but how do i do it so um at, this will be a little overwhelming but bear with me as i walk you through it and don't worry if you can't read it i just want you to have a tour of it so you know what's to come and if this is something that would be helpful if not just let it go just hit delete okay you don't have to open everything and respond to everything just know that this is an invitation if it helps you so a decade ago literally several colleagues and i uh dr sana haryusla webb i haven't said your name son in so long i can't even say it anymore uh ashley who's on the call um Colleagues in Michigan, Lydia Moore and Jennifer Champagne. Colleagues in Iowa, Melanie Reese and Pam Elwood. And I'm probably forgetting a whole bunch of people. Jennifer Grisham Brown at Kentucky. A whole bunch of us were working on how to help people match a technology-based resource with their outcome. So Ashley put in the link the... Um, that's okay. Uh, the um, how to do this, which is what we're going over today in the webinar. But you're going to also have this matrix. Across the top are your 
outcomes. And I'll do a quick thing, um, Melissa, because I'm running out of time. I'll specifically record how I would do this for a pair and share online because there's a broad category of the outcome is um, participants will interact with one another. Do you see that column over here? And what you would do is you would go down the column and you would look for the X marks the spot. And then over here, it would give you a technology that would facilitate, augment, amplify, allow that particular goal to be achieved. And so you can look down and say, okay, do I wanna do a personal response? Nope, I really want a parent share. Do I wanna do a screencast? No, I really wanna do a parent share. So we've broadly defined the outcome and we've paired it with a broad technology or web-based technology. And you might need to go a little deeper if you're really in specifically saying, I want a parent share, two people, to have 10 minutes to interact. You might need to go a little deeper or you might need to hit reply to an email of mine and say, I get it, Christy, I've got the matrix, but help me go a little deeper for this very particular outcome. But I'll say to you, I know you want a parent share, two adults, 10 minutes. I'm gonna ask you, what's your what? before I ever give you my how. So just know that if you email me, I'm gonna ask you for your significant learning outcome before I offer a how. So this is a matrix that all those wonderful people I just mentioned have been working on. Well, Ashley and I looked at it and we're like, huh, technology has changed a whole lot. So yesterday we started revamping this. And then that's when I said, Christy, slow down, get it right, get it done well, get it to everybody on Saturday. So during the webinar today, this Zoom session, I'm just giving you the big picture, outcome across the top. If any of you do embedding schedules, if any of you embed um, or no activity-based intervention, it's like that. It's like kids' IEP goals by your daily routine. And when they intersect, this is what you can do. And so we will give you um, this matrix will give you a blank one that you can use as a worksheet to work through your own learning, significant learning outcomes, and then the technology. Yesterday it came up and said, are the technologies you're offering here on the left-hand side, let me make it a little bigger so that you can see it, are they free? So there's a couple things. We're not recommending any particular technology. We gave you some suggestions, uh, no, examples, so that you understood what it was that we were talking about. The technology changes so rapidly that we can't make um, suggestions. There's also district policies and firewall issues. There's HIPAA and FERPA. There's all kinds of things that you may need to dig into another layer. Plus, once you know what you're what, and once you've found the web-based technology on our grid, you can Google what's the best podcasting for free for educators. And there will be a quadrillion people's opinions. So once you've got your what and your who and your how, you can Google it and find it. Or you can hit reply to my email and say, I know my what, I know my who, I know my technology. Which one should I use? And we'll do our best to help you. So hopefully that makes sense that you can um, apply all that you're learning here today, get the pieces and parts, and then still reach out to this community to get the actual answer that you're searching for, okay? All right, Whew. who are you serving? Let's do that really quickly. And then I wanna pause long enough that you can make sure that I have answered and Ashley can, uh, interrupt me if I'm not covering something that somebody said. If you're like, I need to see that matrix again, don't worry, you'll see it again. I'll do more examples. If you drop in the chat, hey, don't just you know help Melissa, I've got this problem. Put your problem, your question, your um, scenario in the chat, it'll get recorded. And then I will do um, on demand as short as I can in five minutes. Um, this is your scenario, like the parent share. This is who your, your significant learning outcome. This is who you're serving. This is what I would recommend, okay? So all of you will get links to all of that as well as tons of examples. So keep posting to the chat your real life concern, real life challenge. Um, then, um, yeah. 
Okay, I'm just looking to see the chat. Okay, who are you serving? This is actually something we could spend an hour on because I care more about who you're serving almost than um, the significant learning outcomes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, um, my screen sharing off so that you can see each other just in case people have put their videos on. If you've been incognito and now's your chance to kind of like see other people, I would love it. I'm gonna walk through um, what to think about in terms of who you're serving. Is it thoughtful? Is it universally designed? And is it equitable, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and so I can see you all. If I'm really big, remember gallery view, you do not need to see me that close up. And oh, some of you have little ones and pets are always welcome. So if anybody um, has a dog or cat or rabbit, thank you for being brave, y'all that are coming on your, your videos. And thank you for those of you who are on video the whole time. It's beautiful to see you. Mary, good to see you again. We've got to stop meeting like this. I hope your book, stuff, your book club went well last night. I'd love to hear about it. So we'll come back to that. Okay, so who are you serving? So I got distracted all of a sudden by seeing your beautiful faces. Um, so the first thing is um, thoughtfulness. What do I mean by thoughtfulness? So if um, any of you uh, were early interventionists back in the day, I'm not going to call you out um, there, uh, Nancy from Kansas, but if you've been doing early intervention as long as me, you know that we had this like beautiful idea. We would go into families' homes and we would say to you, oh, you know what? You could do therapy when you're changing your kids' diapers. And so then the speech therapist said, hey, dad, you can do speech therapy while you're changing diapers. And the occupational therapist said, you can do OT while you're changing diapers. And then the PT and then the teacher and then the parents like, oh, for the love of God, people, I have triplets and all I want to do is change diapers and get out of there. I don't want to do PT, OT, SLP, you know, the same thing happened with us. We're like, oh, hey, you could do clickers and you could do discussion boards and you could do um, an online PowerPoint and you could do uh, a Zoom. And we forgot that these humans had more than one class they were taking. And so every instructor had a different clicker and a different discussion thread and a dis different this and a different that and a different technology. So these poor students had 800 logins, 800 clickers they were walking around. If you don't know what clickers are, they were do the poll anywhere. Back in the day, we would poll on a clicker. So they had a schlep one for each class they were taking. So really think about these humans aren't just interacting with you. These humans are interacting with the world. So do you have to have a login and password? Because if you're like me, you never know your login and password. So can you be grace and ease without making them have another login and password? Is there something that's already being used by their district? Can they feel comfortable with it? Can you put it on you to get used to, fill in the blank, instead of making them use your technology? Think about privacy. So I tried to let people know this would be recorded. I tried to let people know who will see this. Probably not as good as I could have done that for you all. But think about not only who will see it, but who could share it, who owns it, what happens when you want to um, shut it down. Does Facebook and the Russians still own it? I have lots of conspiracy theory issues. But think about it, right? Think about. Who owns it? Does the university own it? They're almost as bad as the Russians. No offense to anyone who's Russian. Um, all of those things have to play. And then, of course, HIPAA and FERPA, especially if you're doing very sensitive, confidential information, which, of course, student assessments, feedback to participants. If you're going to do a quick pair and share, how are you doing? And you're going to share, like I just told everybody that Mary had a book study last night. Probably not, probably what I should have done, right? I didn't say what they were drinking or doing, right? That was, that was at least better. <laughs> um, so you have to be thoughtful about those things, which I clearly am not. I think about them, but usually after it's come out. So then you have to go, oh. And so you might have to have policies. You might have to have agreements. What can we share? What's confidential? And you may have to uh, not assume that everybody knows what is confidential. Okay, um, also think about, are they Mac users? Are they PC or Windows users? Are they mobile device users? This will be clearly based upon geographical location and age. 
So you may not think about it on a phone because you're like, I can't see my phone without different glasses 16 times. So I have a big screen. So I design all my content with my big screen. And then I've got 20 year olds that are like, what the is that? So you've got to think about how are people going to interface with this? Do they, can they hear it, see it? There comes the UDL. Um, some people like to read it. Some people like to hear it. Some people like to see it. Some people like to lick it. Okay, licking is a little hard. So you got to think about the end user and you got to do what we call high flex. You've got to present stuff in multiple means of representation. You got to record it. You got to get a transcript of it. You got to, right? You got to be able to hear it so that if I'm driving, which they shouldn't be, they should be at home. But it might be crazy. Like today I met with a great friend in Michigan and she said, can we just talk? And I'm like, oh, for the love of God, I don't have to worry what my hair looks like. Yes, I would love to just talk to you on the phone. So sometimes people just want to hear it. They don't need to see it. Maybe the seeing part is distracting. So think all the way through that. Text, audio, video. Whenever possible, pair up more than one. So always have video and audio or video and text or audio and text or audio or all three if possible. A lot more work. Absolutely. Back to Hattie's point, maybe get focused so that you can do something well instead of everything mediocre. Hattie, you want to jump in? Oh, I was just, um, I just put in the chat box a link from um, a professor at University of Kentucky who had created, and it's, it's universally shared now, um, a Google Doc with example questions and ideas to, to gather that inf kind of information about your learners and their How needs. What is that, Patty? Thank you. See, I told y'all what she should just done this. And I'm like, let's listen to Hattie some more. Okay, so we'll check that out. We'll give you some, we'll check it. Um, I try to tell people like, use me to be like your Google. Like, let me look at it, make sure it'll meet your needs. I know it does because Hattie's sharing it. But if there's stuff out there, I'll vet it. And I'm only gonna share stuff with you that I know is good for early intervention, early childhood, early childhood special ed, and stuff that is within this paradigm of how we're thinking about um, good distance ed. Now. We're three minutes to close. If you need to get off, this is another ground rule. Jump off anytime, it is not rude. If you feel like it and you wanna say goodbye, go ahead, drop it in the chat. Otherwise, just leave the meeting, knowing that I'll continue to record it and you'll get the full thing. So if you miss something, just fast forward to right at the end and see what you missed, okay? I'm gonna keep going, but I wanna recognize that we had an hour set and you all have other things that are you've been keeping at bay to be engaged with me. So uh, thoughtfulness in terms of what else they have going on in their lives, privacy, um, if they're PC, Mac, mobile users, is there login and passwords, universal design for learning, meaning multiple means of your representation, but I would also say multiple means of engagement and multiple means of expression. If you haven't been in the UDL world in a while, uh, just be watching my tips. I'm gonna give you more about UDL as it applies to adult learners and learning in uh, distance education. But engagement is how do we have different ways? That's like the pair and share versus uh, discussion versus listening to recorded content. How do they, how do you mix it up so that it um, keeps them, they, them engaged? And then multiple means of expression. Uh, if you don't know Jen Newton's work, and Ashley, if you can put Jen Newton's website up, that would be great. Um, Jennifer Newton, she's a faculty here in Ohio. She's also a, a DEC member. She's on Twitter a lot. She talks a lot about a new way of thinking of assessing learning, which is just brilliant so it's beyond grading and so it's not just face to face or online it's re uh, imagining how we think about assessing outcomes and growth and learning so jen newton is her name we'll get you her link that might be where you want to start is how am i assessing how am i looking to see that people are um not just you know they've got to watch the webinar and they can't go any further until they do a multiple choice quiz Ugh. Not, no offense if you just made that, but it's not like the best way ever <laughs> to assess learning and it kind of annoys the user. Um, so how can we do that in a way that is a little bit more grace and ease? And then think about those that don't have good internet, whether you're in um, 
Alaska, no offense to Alaska, but you know, even uh, Hattie, who's there in Anchorage, when we would connect uh, through distance, she's shown up. Where have you all shown up, Hattie? In your garage, in your basement, anywhere she can get her Wi Fi to be best, right? And so, but we also have a lot of our friends that are on here that live in rural areas and um, connection may be an issue. We're going to do a special little tidbit. I have a colleague who's an expert in all things small town and she, I reached out to her to say, what's out there? What are people doing for rural communities? And she gave me some suggestions, but nobody has it figured out yet. So the kind of suggestion is, can you work offline? and then come back online. So avoid uh, always having things that are um, synchronous, live like I'm doing right now, that you have to be bandwidth for an hour. Things that are streaming, uh, lots of taking a lot of the bandwidth. Uh, so by having video, that pulls a lot of bandwidth. So can students, participants get it online, work with it, be offline, and then re-engage online. So that's a, another thing you have to kind of think through in terms of access and um, the human element of it. Then very quickly, jump in my friends if you need to. Our last thing about um, where are you going with all of this? So a couple of quick tips. And again, if you need to jump off, don't worry, we will um, get you all of this. I've lost all of my stuff. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, one last thing about who you're serving. <laughs> Those of us that are over here, we've been 25 more than once, it takes us longer. So slowing down, saying it more than once, it does not offend us. If you've got a mixed age group, take that into consideration that age will impact how not only we interact with the web-based technology, but how we learn. And it just means there's more physiological effort the older I am. So be more conscientious that I'm gonna be flipping my lid, you know, not feeling safe, seen, soothed, or secure the older I am, especially if I have to figure out the Zoom and find my password and put my reading glasses on just to even start to get to the content. So just be aware of those changes in our brain over time. Um, okay, so what's your long-term plan? Whatever you invest in, if that's a financial investment or that's an investment in money or, um, yeah, that's human capacity, what's your long-term goal? Can you grow into it? So if you go, well, it's free. Okay, it might be great that it's free today, but if when you go to buy it, you're like, oh, this is great. I want to do this forever. And now the district can fund it. There's a disruption. There's no easy way to go from free to paid with that company. Probably not good. Also, if it's just free and that company doesn't have anything that's paid or bigger, they probably don't have any support. They may go away tomorrow and they may not be fixing any of the things that are broken. So while free is good, know that it comes with a downside. So you might start with free, but look for that company to grow with you or at least have paying customers who are paying while you're getting it for free for the tech support, for the YouTube videos, for the fixing of the glitches, for making it flawless in a mobile and a laptop environment, a desktop environment. So just make sure that while it sounds good today, you may like this and may do it long term. So can you grow into it? Um, can you export it? You may leave your job. You may leave the university. You may want to take this to a different group. And if it's all in Blackboard, who owns it is sure a question, but what it, can you get it back out? Can you take it now and put it over in Moodle? Can you take it now and put it in Zoom? So be thinking about, sorry, for a little typo there, can you export it easily and put it in a different format? Or did you create it and build it so much in this learning management system or course management system that it can only be accessed in there? And if they go away or if I stop using that system, I'm dead in the water. And then think about, um, can other people um, help with it? So that's that example I gave earlier, like that Tony and Ashley are helping me today. Does whatever web-based technology have uh, different levels of access? 
So you're the host, but these guys could be the moderator and they could be the participants. If you want to do breakouts, can you um, assign a team lead that has special control over the technology in the breakout rooms because you can't be in every room at the same time? So you really wanna make sure that others can help you execute it. Not that it's gonna fall for you to be, but it will guaranteed to be 24 seven tech support. So there people are gonna ask you, the link's broken. I can't hear, um, my microphone's not working. And you're like, um, okay. How are you gonna help people with that? Do you have some way to divide your team up and somebody who's really good on a Windows-based machine is tech support for the Windows-based users, mobile, laptop. That may not be possible, but those are the beautiful things you wanna to try to consider, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, I went too quickly. Um, so I'm gonna leave this just on the screen while we're talking here for a minute. Uh, again, if you need to jump off, I'm, I'm over my time with you, but what happens going forward? So what happens going forward is if you registered, which you did because you're on the call today or you're watching this, you are in my flow. You're in my list where you're gonna get content dripped to you over time. At any time, you can unsubscribe. If you're like, this is not a match, this is not helpful, it's too much, just know you can always opt out. But I'm gonna stay in your inbox, helping you in any way I can in the coming days, okay? Then, I, a couple of people are just jumping on. We're wrapping up, but don't worry, this has all been recorded, and we'll make sure that you know where to do next. You can also follow me on social media. You can pick the one that you like. Uh, I try to do different things in different places, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Facebook is where I am every day. Um, I try to be on Instagram, and with Ashley's great help, I'm on Twitter often. So just think if that would be an easier way to stay in touch. But email is the primary way. All of this stuff that we covered today is gonna to be dripped or rolled out to you over time. By Saturday, there'll be a bigger dump. That's gonna be the recordings, the PowerPoints, the matrix, all the big stuff that we talked about in this session. Otherwise, everything will be dripped to you. And then I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a dream um, that I'd like you to reflect on as you close. So just like when we started, we kind of grounded ourselves with Grace Lee Boggs' work. As we leave, I like people to have a little bit of closure so that we don't just go right back to where we were. We take a minute and think about what has this last hour meant to me? What does this mean for myself? Uh, and those I serve. And I'm going to ask any of you that have jumped on already, and certainly um, Hattie, who uh, has been doing this for a long time, how can we use this as an opportunity to reclaim children's right to learn through play? How can whatever it is we're doing right now really keep in the forefront that play? So if we're giving activities home, if we're helping teachers, create activities that families can do at home, are we really Peter Pan believing in the power of play? And then more broadly, do we believe that play is important across the lifespan? So have we reclaimed any age person's right to learn through play? Is this, whatever I've created for you, joyful? And can we reimagine inclusion? So we're thinking about access, we're thinking about equity, we're thinking about universal design, we're making sure that everyone feels like they are part and supported. The four S's, are you safe? Do you feel seen? Are you soothed? Are you secure? That's part of reimagining what we mean by inclusion. And then perhaps after all the dust kind of settles a bit, we've actually revolutionized how we do early care and education. And so I'll pause there. Anybody that needs to jump off, jump off. Anybody that wants to chat their dream, their what if, their next step, put it in the chat or unmute yourself and just share. And I'll breathe and have a drink. What do you hope?
Who do you need to reach out to? Where do you need to begin? What oxygen mask do you need to put on first? And if there's something specific we can help you with, put that in the chat or just email me. You can privately chat with me too. It'll get recorded if you don't want to share with everyone, even though I've disclosed where you all live and <laughs> what you do or do not drink and <laughs> what you think. Hattie, any words of wisdom as people are leaving or any ways that you can share that you gained confidence doing this? Just be yourself. And, and don't be afraid to try, try new things. We're all learning together. Yeah. Sarah said something like that last night too. And she said, just ask. Like, just like we want people to ask if we use an acronym. Um, when I did the blog the other day on which technology to use, I made an audio recording. And so the beautiful thing was, I don't know if she's on today, the, the colleague who had asked the question about Zoom versus closed Facebook group, after I gave her my answer, then she had a technology question. She's like, how did you make that, that audio recording and post it? So you can, it's beautiful if you ask those questions, then we can go, oh, Right. There was a day when I didn't know how to do that. Leanne Young, for me, was that person. I was so afraid to do um, anything that was online, believe it or not, like especially with video, because I didn't know how to record a video. I didn't know how to edit a video, and I had no idea how to upload it to my course management system. And so I followed the advice I gave you all today. And I said, Leanne, what do you do? And she was using... Um, what used to be called Jing and now is more broadly known as Camtasia. She spent 10, 15 minutes, maybe two days, showing me how to do it. And I have, I have used it so often, especially when I was faculty, that when I was giving students feedback, I would be like, you know what? It's easier to say this than to write it. So I would type, I've stopped giving you feedback. Listen to the audio screencast. And so I would go through their document, literally their, their dissertation would be on my screen and I would go line by line, how to fix it, what I didn't like. And it would be like a two hour feedback. And so one of my students, Brooke Winchell in the great state of Wisconsin, she made me a rubber stamp that I could use that said, go listen to the screen <laughs> screencast because it was just this funny thing that we did that I like no longer gave feedback written. I would just spend two hours recording um, because I don't know if that made sense, but that was my, my way of easing into technology and then getting obsessed with it. Okay. Anything else folks? Good for the order. Good to see you back. Yeah. I see that they're saying nice to see you. So I say nice to see you too. I didn't recognize you with your hair up. Beth, we did this impromptu podcast that's gone a little, it's gone viral according to my stats. Um, and uh, we get together Sunday morning to record it. Beth's all done up. I'm like, Beth, we're just doing the audio. And I'm like, you know, even on, on a good day, this is as good as it gets. And so I've never seen her with her hair up. Not that you don't look beautiful. I just didn't recognize you. All right, everybody good? You got your last thoughts in here? Thank you for your, your kindness. Thanks, guys. I know that my team appreciates that this is of use because um, we, we desire greatly to be of use without overwhelming, which is my MO. Because <laughs> if one is good, 100 is better. All right, anything for Hattie? Uh, thank you, Anne. Thank you, and thanks, guys, for connecting me with Evelyn. I'm gonna be talking to her here shortly. Yeah, Hattie, thank you. And thank you for sharing your tutorial, speaking of screencasts, and uh, for that link from the University of, uh, the folks in Kentucky will be sure to share that widely. And then just like stay in my loop and um, help me help people as best you can. And then of course, if there's anything I can do for your um, teams up there in Anchorage, just let me know. All right, I'm gonna close out. Thank you all for joining today. And uh, Evelyn, I'll be talking to you in a minute. All right, bye guys.